In 2026, Formula One will commit the biggest engineering mistake in its 75-year history. And this isn't speculation. The drivers themselves are sounding the alarm. Charles Leclerc called his first 2026 simulator run not enjoyable. Max Verstappen warned about power conservation issues. Sebastian Vettel compared it to the disastrous 2014 regulation changes that gave Mercedes eight years of dominance. After analyzing every technical specification and driver comment, the evidence is clear. 2026 won't just change F1, it will destroy everything that makes it the pinnacle of motorsport. So let's cut through the corporate PR and give you the unfiltered truth about Formula One's technical evolution. We will be dissecting every aspect of the 2026 regulations, from the hybrid power unit changes to the active aerodynamics gimmicks. Despite the FIA's promise of lighter, safer, and more competitive racing, the drivers who have tested these systems tell a very different story, and the engineering data backs up their concerns. Let's start with the most fundamental change, the power unit revolution that's dividing the F1 paddock. The numbers are staggering. The internal combustion engine drops from 550 kilowatts to just 400 kilowatts. That's a 27% reduction in pure engine power. Meanwhile, the MGUK electric motor jumps from 120 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts, nearly tripling electric output. This creates a 50-50 split between combustion and electric power, fundamentally changing how F1 cars accelerate, sound, and feel to drive. The FIA has two primary motivations for this radical shift. First, sustainability. They've pledged carbon neutrality by 2030. Second, relevance. With internal combustion engines dying in road cars and EVs dominating automotive development, F1 wants to stay connected to the real world. But here's the engineering reality they don't want to discuss. The MGUH system that has defined hybrid F1 since 2014 is being completely eliminated. This isn't simplification, it's regression. The MGUH recovered energy from exhaust heat, making the current hybrid systems incredibly efficient. Removing it means the 2026 cars will actually be less energy efficient than current machines, despite the increased electric power. To understand how catastrophic this power dependency becomes, look at Monaco 2018. Daniel Ricciardo's MGUK failed early in the race, costing him about 20% of total power. Through brilliant driving and Monaco's unique characteristics, he still won. Under the 2026 regulations, that victory would be impossible. Lose your hybrid system and you lose 50% of your power, you're not limping home, you're done. The margin for mechanical failure has been eliminated. When the sports elite drivers are expressing concern, that's not adaptation anxiety. That's a red flag about fundamental design problems. The FIA's solution to improve racing involves turning F1 cars into mechanical transformers with artificial assistance systems. First, active aerodynamics. The system operates in two modes, X mode for high downforce in corners and Z mode for low drag on straights. Both front and rear wings automatically adjust based on track position and speed, with drivers able to manually override the system. The FIA's original targets were ambitious, 55% drag reduction and 30% downforce reduction. But in late 2024, reality hit. They quietly revised the downforce reduction target to just 15% for performance and safety reasons. Think about that. They had to scale back their own regulations because the original targets were too extreme, that's not fine-tuning, that's admitting the concept was flawed from the start. Second, the overtaking system. Since 2011, F1 has relied on a simple, predictable crutch for overtaking. DRS. Push a button, rear wing opens, top speed increases. Simple, effective, and sometimes too easy. The 2026 regulations scrapped that system entirely, replacing it with a new manual override system. The reason for this replacement gets to the core of the 2026 car's engineering problem. Under the new rules, a car's electric power is designed to taper off at high speeds to save energy on the straights. On a long straight, the lead car's electrical boost will diminish to zero as it approaches top speed. The manual override is a tactical fix for this flaw. If a driver is within a set distance of the car ahead, the system gives them a temporary license to cheat. It allows them to bypass the normal rules and deploy their full 350 kilowatts of electrical power for a longer period, giving them a significant speed advantage. This isn't a simple button that opens a wing. It's an artificial lifeline to get a car past its opponent when it would otherwise run out of power. The FIA claims this will create a tactical chess match. Do you use the override at turn one to launch an immediate attack or save it for the main straight to defend a position? 
what they're really doing is replacing pure driver skill and aerodynamic efficiency with battery management tactics. The 2026 regulations don't just change how cars produce power. They fundamentally alter what it means to be an F1 driver. Energy harvesting changes are equally radical. Current cars recover 2 megajoules per lap through braking. The 2026 regulations mandate 8.5 megajoules, more than quadruple the energy recovery. Without the MGUH system, cars rely exclusively on kinetic energy from braking and deceleration. This means drivers will need to completely reimagine their approach to corners and braking zones. Energy recovery becomes as important as lap time, fundamentally changing racing strategy. Max Verstappen's 2023 simulator testing at Monza revealed the system's fundamental flaw. After testing the system, he described a car that couldn't maintain speed in top gear, requiring flat-out downshifts. He warned this would create significant power conservation issues across different circuits. Think about what that means. The world's best driver is being told to drop gears while at full throttle, something that would destroy a real gearbox through mechanical abuse. Carlos Sainz's assessment was equally revealing. After simulator testing, he described the 2026 cars as very complicated and occupying a lot of brain space while driving. He compared it to the shock driver's experience transitioning from V8s to hybrids in 2014. Charles Leclerc admitted the 2026 car concept was not enjoyable and very, very different from anything drivers are used to. Here's the key difference from 2014. The hybrid introduction at least maintained the fundamental character of F1 racing. The 2026 changes transform drivers from racers into energy management specialists. Alexander Albon's comparison to Formula E is particularly damning. He noted that drivers will need to manipulate races through energy deployment strategies, similar to how Formula E drivers manage their battery usage. Think about that comparison. Formula E, a series known for artificial racing aids and energy conservation, is being held up as the model for F1's future. The FIA recognized the power delivery problems and introduced a power ramp down system, a direct admission that their power unit concept was flawed. Instead of electric power disappearing instantly, it's forced to fade at a controlled rate. The number you see here is the rate of decay. On high demand tracks with long straights like Spa, the power fades at a slower rate of 50 kilowatts per second. On other circuits, it drops at a much faster rate of 100 kilowatts per second. This isn't a performance boost, it's a safety net. It gives drivers a longer, more predictable warning before their electrical power completely vanishes, preventing a sudden and dangerous loss of speed. It doesn't solve the fundamental issue. It just makes the system failure more manageable. It's a bandage on a design flaw. Let's address what the FIA refuses to acknowledge. They're systematically destroying F1's sensory identity. The shift from the screaming V10s of 2005 to the V8s and then to the V6 turbos in 2014, already stripped the sport of its signature sound. The initial move to the V6 turbos dropped sound levels by about 11 decibels, but because the decibel scale is logarithmic, that felt like much more. To put it simply, the turbos muffled the high-pitched shriek, fundamentally altering the acoustic character of the cars. The 2026 regulations, with their 50% electric power split, will cut the remaining combustion engine noise in half again. With the internal combustion engine reduced to 400 kilowatts and electric motors providing silent power delivery, the 2026 cars will be significantly quieter during crucial racing moments. The sound of a Formula One car at full throttle, that mechanical symphony of precision engineering, is being replaced by the whir of electric motors and the muted hum of a tiny engine. The energy recovery demands will even change how corners look and sound. Drivers may need to rev engines in low gears mid-corner, not to accelerate, but to generate electrical energy through resistance. Imagine hearing cars working hard through Monaco's hairpin, not because they're fighting for position, but because they're recharging batteries. Adrian Newey, F1's greatest aerodynamicist, summed up the broader impact. These changes will fundamentally alter the driving rhythm that has defined F1 for decades. When the man who designed championship winning cars for three different teams says the driving rhythm is changing, that's not adaptation, that's transformation. F1's appeal has always transcended pure competition. The sound of 20 cars at full throttle, the mechanical symphony of precision engineering pushed to its limits. These elements create emotional connections that no amount of sustainable fuel can replace. Lewis Hamilton's response was diplomatically positive, calling the changes fascinating. But his emphasis on uncertainty, it could go either way, it could be good, it could be not so good, reveals the deep uncertainty even experienced drivers feel. 
Sebastian Vettel's criticism cuts to the heart of the issue. He warned that parts of the 2026 regulations don't make sense and compared them to the problematic 2014 changes that created years of Mercedes dominance. The 2026 regulations represent the most expensive rule change in F1 history and the FIA knows it. The budget cap is being increased from $135 million to $215 million for 2026, a massive 59% increase to offset new regulations and previously excluded items. That's an admission that these regulations are so expensive they had to blow up their own cost control measures. Think about what that means. The FIA introduced budget caps to level the playing field and control costs. Now they're abandoning their own financial discipline because the 2026 regulations are too expensive to fit within reasonable limits. Teams face unprecedented development costs for new hybrid power unit development, active aerodynamic systems, and energy management integration. The complexity means development costs will be astronomical, with Audi's entry as a works team further intensifying financial pressure on existing competitors. Private testing begins in Barcelona this January, followed by official sessions in Bahrain and Spain in February. Expect massive reliability costs for battery cooling systems, brake-by-wire technology, regeneration mapping, and integration failure repairs. Here's the hypocrisy. The FIA justifies this financial explosion with sustainability claims. Yes, 2026 will introduce 100% sustainable fuels, genuinely positive for the billion combustion cars still on roads globally. But let's examine the full environmental picture of this supposedly green solution. These new hybrid systems require lithium mining for battery cells, rare earth elements for electric motors, complex manufacturing processes, global shipping of components, frequent replacement due to increased complexity. Meanwhile, F1 continues flying 20 cars and hundreds of personnel to 24 races worldwide. The actual racing represents a microscopic fraction of global emissions, yet we're destroying the sport's character to appear environmentally conscious. The carbon footprint of manufacturing, transporting, and disposing of these complex electric components likely exceeds any environmental benefit from the racing itself. But the FIA doesn't publish those calculations. They had to increase the budget cap by 59% just to make the regulations financially viable. That's not cost reduction or environmental responsibility. That's cost explosion and virtue signaling at the expense of competitive integrity. Based on the technical specifications, driver feedback, and historical precedent, here are the logical outcomes these 2026 regulations are likely to produce. Reliability catastrophe. Expect the first five races of 2026 to see a high number of mechanical failures as teams struggle with the sheer complexity of new hybrid systems, active aerodynamics, and energy management. The Barcelona testing in January will likely reveal just how unprepared teams are for this level of integration. Driver adaptation crisis. It is highly probable that at least three current F1 drivers will struggle significantly with the transition, which could potentially end careers. Charles Leclerc's admission about racing muscle memory and Carlos Sainz's concerns about complexity foreshadow this difficult adaptation challenge. Manufacturer dominance. The complexity of the new power units makes it a near certainty that one engine manufacturer will achieve early superiority, similar to Mercedes in 2014. This could create a competitive imbalance lasting for two to three years, as early development advantages will be nearly impossible for rivals to overcome. Spectacle degradation. We could see a decline in race attendance and television viewership as the artificial nature of active aerodynamics and energy management reduces the perceived authenticity of the competition. Regulation reversal. It is a strong possibility that by 2028, mounting pressure from teams, drivers, and fans will force the FIA to significantly modify or abandon key elements of the 2026 regulations. Similar to the rapid changes made to qualifying formats and point systems in previous eras, these aren't pessimistic predictions. They're logical outcomes based on the engineering realities and competitive dynamics the 2026 regulations create. The evidence is overwhelming. Driver concerns, technical complexity, and financial burdens all point to the same conclusion. The 2026 regulations represent an engineering disaster that will fundamentally damage Formula One. Charles Leclerc's simulator experience, Max Verstappen's power conservation warnings, Sebastian Vettel's historical comparisons, and James Valls's competitive concerns aren't isolated opinions. They're a chorus of alarm from the people who understand F1 best. The FIA has prioritized political correctness over racing purity, artificial aids over driver skill, and sustainability theater over competitive integrity. The 2026 regulations aren't evolution. They're the systematic destruction of everything that makes Formula One the pinnacle of motorsport. 
If you believe F1 should reward driver skill over energy management, hit that like button, tell us in the comments which 2026 change concerns you most, and subscribe for more unfiltered analysis that exposes the truth behind F1's technical evolution.